Okay. Well, good evening, everyone, again. And uh, uh, we have one more message to present today. And this is the message of Deborah and Barak. Now, each time I present one of these judges, and in this case, there's two together, um, we are looking at a line. And every time we look at a line, we have to understand how a line is constructed. That these are not something that, that man has created. This is something that God has placed in his word. And the primary line we use is Millerite history. And the secondary line is the line that begins the 2300 days, the three decrees. The three angels' messages and the three decrees give us this pattern of how lines are constructed. The ones dealing with uh, ancient Israel coming out of captivity and Ellen White parallels the 70 years of captivity with the 1260 years of papal supremacy. And so those lines are connected. But those lines are part of other lines. And that each way mark in a line, as we know, we can zoom into it. Now, in Deborah and Barak, we are looking at the line of the judges and we're zooming into uh, a line where we're formalizing a message. And in the last study, we looked at Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, and we saw that this was a message about uh, light coming to us, a message of repentance, the work of the Holy Spirit. And this was done in very particular ways by God in giving us a prophetic message. And it was leading to uh, October 13th, 2018, when we proclaimed, uh, we, we were proclaiming the message of time in this movement. We were setting a date, and this was confirmed on October 13th, 2018, by 391.5. And now we're looking at, on the judge's line, the formalization of this message happens in a period of 329 days. And that is, when we look at Deborah and Barak, we're zooming into the line of the judges that is addressing October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019. And this is a period of 329 days. So a period of 329 days relates to a period of 3,290 days or 91 days, which is the, the entire length of the prophetic mirror from December 21st, 2012, we're going to look at this in some other studies, to December 25th, 2021. But this is a period in which we have confirmed at Lambert Church at noon, I do a measurement, and I count the days to November 9th. And I find that if I start at noon, it, two, three, 91 and a half days brings me to midnight convince commencing November 9th, 2019. I confirm this date through all of these studies that I had done that that date is prophetically significant. And then from that, we also recognize July 18th and so forth. So all of those things are going to be part of that study. But what's going to happen between October 13th, 2018 and September 7, 2019 is we're going to have apostasy in this movement. We're going to have the rebellion of Baal Peor. We're going to have Parminder come in, Sisera, to destroy this message. Right? That's what we're going to be studying when we look at this message of Deborah and Barak. It is the history of that 329 days, that conflict that happens. 
But when we zoom into it as a line, we see a lot more detail than we would just looking at October 13th to September 7th. So the line of Deborah and Barak address, addresses the period where time setting was accepted in the movement and a clash between God's organization and man's ideas and plans for organization occurs. In the line of the judges, it is a formalization of the first message that began at 9-11. So that means it's on the line of the judges, 9-11 is the arrival of a message. This waymark is the formalization of that message. The enemy here is Sisera, and the general of, he's the general of Jabin, king of Canaan, a nation which had not been driven out. Now we know from Stephen's presentation uh, that he was defeated, that the king of Canaan was defeated, but over a number of years, over a hundred years later, uh, they have developed and, and once again established themselves. That's correct, Stephen, right? Okay. Uh, these were left, or last, least in this case, to come back to try and test us, to bring, us, bring about a correction. We connect Sisera to the message of Parminder and Jabin to the Jesuit methods he employed. Though we not, do not believe he's a Jesuit. Uh, the end does not justify the means. Deceit in any form is of satanic origin. Parminder admitted that deceit was necessary to bring about his ends. His ends then can only be satanic. Now, time, Parminder had this time setting. It was based upon dispensationalism a type of dispensationalism that says that in the past people just understood things wrong and so Ellen White was a, a prophet for a different dispensation when she said there's no, you know, no time prophecies after 1844 that only applied to her dispensation but not to ours. And he misused some of Jeff's understanding regarding um, uh, public evangelism because public evangelism as Jeff presented wasn't about dispensationalism is about simply the fact that we are unfit to call people into our church because we're not out of Babylon yet. I mean, we're not, we can't call somebody out of something if we're in it ourselves. And, uh, but Parminder turned that into a different dispensation, that we're in a different dispensation, and that's why. But that wasn't actually Jeff's argument at all. Uh, but he added that argument to Jeff's, and then he applied that same argument uh, to... Uh, the Sunday law. So he says, you know, we're not going to have a Sunday law. He even said that the idea of keeping the Sabbath and the way that it was done in Adventism was a mistake. <clears throat> so Parminder was uh, teaching errors that come from the Jesuit movement. Dispensational, dispensationalism is one of those. He also used uh, the darkness in this line is the false organizational principles. Secrecy is part of those false principles. In Romania in 2017, the delegates were told to keep secret events and not share them with others. And this is not the way that God's church works. Now, I love the church that I've been a member of for a long time. Uh, it's not as good now as it used to be. But in the old days, um, when we had a board meeting... Nothing was secret. In fact, all the board members would go and tell everybody about what happened at the board meeting. And then if people complained and had input, the board would come back and say, well, you know, a lot of people aren't happy with what the decision the board made. We should reconsider it. But then we had a pastor who said, everything in this board meeting is secret. And you can't tell anything, anybody anything that happened in this board meeting. The reason why is because they were wanting to control things. If people knew what was going on, then the plans of the pastor would get thwarted by everybody uh, disagreeing, right? And I, I talked to him about it. I said, you know, if you want to be a leader, because he was a young pastor and I, he didn't like me telling him what to do, but I did anyway. If you want to be a leader, you have to get people to follow you. That is, people have to see that you're leading some direction. You can't push them, and Warburg Church, I mean, trying to get them to do what you want is like trying to herd cats. Um, you know, so if you're going to get cats to do what you want, you need some milk and maybe some cheese and maybe, you know, some soft cat food or something. 
But the point is, he was trying to push everything on everybody, and so nobody did anything. They would make decisions on the board and nothing would be done because nobody supported it. It was just pushed through. Um, so I say that because when we look at organization, we have a leader, which is Christ. And if I want to be a leader in God's church, I am to follow Christ. And you are only to follow me as I follow Christ. Right? right. I'm not to um, lord it over the, God's heritage. Right? right? All of us are brethren. And we can encourage one another to follow Christ. We can be an example of Christ's likeness. But that's not what this movement was doing. They were using Jesuit ideas, secrecy. And they created a thing called the Doctrinal Analysis Group. It's like the BRI or like an imprimatur on a Catholic uh, book. You know, you need the, the stamp of approval by the Pope in order to read a book if you're a Catholic. And that's what this Biblical Research Institute, I mean, the Doctrinal and Analysis Group did is they said, if you want to publish something in the movement, you need to send it to this group of people. I was one of them. And we have to approve what you are saying before we can publish it. And I thought, well, okay, that kind of makes sense. If Jeff is going to publish stuff in future news, maybe they want to have a few people look at it and have some suggestions. But what Tabo used it for was, you didn't send your study of July 18th in to the doctrinal analysis group to get an imprimatur by us papists, right? He says, you can't say anything about July 18th because it's not approved. So I didn't, right? I mean, I still kept studying it. But, but that wasn't the purpose, I thought, of the doctrinal analysis group. But I wasn't in charge, so... So, and Jeff can decide what he's going to share. I mean, what he's going to put in his paper, that's fine. Uh, that's, not, that's not censorship. But to shut down other people from sharing amongst friends, other people sharing their ideas to others in the movement, that's papal. That's what the church did with the 2520. <clears throat> now, the message is, so that's the darkness. The messages of Deborah and Barak relate to the God's provinces, providences that exposed the errors of Parminder. So there was messages that were given from September 11th, or September 11th, September 23rd, 2017, to November 9th, 2019. So the line of Deborah and Barak looks like this, like all other lines. It's going to have a period of darkness, right? And we're saying that this is organization, and that's false organization. That's Parminder. That's the darkness that precedes a message. And God in his providence gave us a message on September 23rd, 2017. And this was the message about the prediction, prediction before midnight. This was a study showing that three days before midnight, July 18th, 1844, Samuel's last letter was published, and this was part of this prediction before midnight. And this is about Samuel Snow's letters. Uh, we saw in the other line, with Shamgar, when we looked at um, this, at first I'd put the deliver and open here, because Samuel Snow's letters are here on September 23rd, but they're actually delivered and opened on October 13th, 2018, because that's when the movement looks at that message, and it's going to be uh, open up this whole thing regarding July 18th. But here in this line, Samuel Snow's letters are still here. And this is the Revelation 12 sign prophecy. And the Revelation 12 sign prophecy is a failed prediction. It's one of the 
the, the prophecies that I saw, like the Mayan calendar, that is a prediction. This one's a Protestant one. The Mayan calendar is a pagan one. But a prediction that was failed. It's a failed prediction. And July 18th is on a line of failed predictions. November 9th, 2019 is on that line. It's a failed prediction. But back here, I'm going to present July 18th, that symbol, that 187, because one of the things I know is that there's 187 days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, and that's all a part of that understanding. So I, know, I understand for the first time that this symbol, 187, relates to July 18th, though I'm only looking at it in 1844. <clears throat> So this first message arrives at Lambert Church, and it's going to be the first day of the seventh month. That is Tishri, the Feast of Trumpets. And in the Revelation 12 sign prophecy, they're saying that what is being seen is an actual view into heaven, into the sky, in the constellation Virgo, and she has 12 stars above her head, which normally there are only nine, but there's going to be 12. It's, the moon's under her feet means it's a new moon because she's clothed with the sun. So that means the sun is in Virgo. So the moon is close to the sun. And it's going to be at the new moon that, that you're going to see this. So it's going to be on the first day of the month. So it's the first day of the seventh month because the sun is in Virgo in September. So not every month is um, uh, the new moon uh, going to be under her feet out on um, in, in this formation, right? So we know that the sun's in Virgo, but it's going to be at different times within that month period that you're going to have the new moon. So the new moon can happen within a 30-day period um, at different times. Uh, but there's also uh, other things that happen. There's Jupiter enters Virgo's womb nine months later and then comes out in September 23rd. 2017. Uh, uh, so there's some other things that happen that are, are very interesting. There's also the Conception Comet that enters Virgo nine months before. Uh, Jupiter leaves uh, Virgo's womb. So, so people looked at this and they made this prediction, well, because they're looking at Revelation 12 and the 1260 days and they take them literally. So that means three and a half years from then, uh, you know, something's going to happen. Or you know, the secret rapture is going to happen then in three and a half years later, however they look at Daniel in these dispensationalists. But it's wrong, right? But it is also got some interesting symbols in that. So that's what happens. That's when this message arrives. Now, so we have this July 18th symbol, Samuel Snow's letters, but in Italy in 2019, uh, 2018, Jeff is going to do a prayer at 9-11. And in the story of Deborah and Barak, uh, there's this negotiation that goes on, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to read the whole story here, but we have this negotiation. And um, so we place that at Italy at 9-11. And this is when time comes into this movement. So this message is going to be formalized at June 9th, uh, 2000, and I put 2019 here. This is 2017, and this is 2018. Now, Jeff here is closing the Sabbath at 9-11. He also does the same thing in 2017. So that, has, that is, before this, he has a 9-11 prayer at, on June 2nd, 2017, that's opening the Sabbath. And it's right when, of, of course, um, you know, that 9-11 is when the sun is setting at 9-11. That's the time it's setting. And he's giving a prayer at 9-11. And it was noted both of these times. But later it's going to be uh, connected to this uh, November 9th understanding. But at the time, nobody knows about that. So we have June 9th. And here... There's going to be 126 days being counted to um, October 13th. So we're going to have a way mark over here, which is going to be October 13th, 2018. And remember, 
this is what this whole line of Deborah and Barak is. It's about October 13th, 2018. But before that, we're going to have uh, another event. Now, first what happens is on July uh, 27th, 2018, Daniel from Brazil, um, I'm not really sure how to say his name, Perea, I don't know how it's said. But anyway, Daniel from Brazil, he notes... That, that he applies 126 days and says that something's going to happen on October 13th related to the message of time setting. And he notes that this is a Sabbath. Now, he's counting an ordinal count. He counts June 10 when Parminda first presents uh, time setting to the movement. And so he's going to count that's the first day. I'm counting from June 9th being zero. He's counting from June 10th being one. So it's a cardinal and an ordinal count. But there's 126 days, right? Now, this July 27th date, this comes from Josiah Lich's prophecy regarding Islam. That is, it's the start of the first woe. July 27th, 1299. And there's 150 years, and then July 27th, 1449, you're going to count... 391 years to July 27th, 1840, and then 15 days to August 11th, right? Now, it's interesting that August 11th is the center date of these two dates. So he's here at July 27th predicting with this 126 days, October 13th, but this is 63 days and this is 63 days, so August 11th is here at the center, Okay. Now, we, we noted before that there was this um, other date, 329 days. So we're going to put this over here. And we're going to put September 7th, um, <clears throat> 2019 over here. And we're going to put at the center, 329 days, right? This is uh, March 27th. 2019. Okay? So we have 329 days there. Okay? And then what we're going to have is November 9th over here, 63 days before November 9th, um, 2019. And then we're going to have 63 days again, and this is going to be... Um, January 11th, 2020. Now, we'll recognize this as a chiasm. <clears throat> uh, so this chiasm uh, has in it a number of structures. So one is you're going to have from here to here the 777 days from September 23rd, 2017, right? to November 9th, and this is going to be, um, and I didn't write all these waymarks in, but this is going to be the first, the first angel arrives, the first angel is formalized, and um, when we do this here, even though uh, nothing happens on August 11th, it's still going to be the empowerment, the first angel is empowered. And then we're going to have October 13th as the second angel arriving. March 27th is going to be the formalization, even though nothing happens on this date. It's a formalization once it's recognized, is how we would put it. Second angel formalized. And then here, um, the second angel is empowered. And then here, the third angel arrives. And here, oops, I do it right third angel arrives, and then here, this is going to be the fourth angel arrives. Okay, so we actually have all of these angels in this line. Now, the fourth angel arriving is, that's connected with um, uh, this study of, of Jeff's dealing with this whole chiasm. So this is what we call the Levitical chiasm. These two periods of 126 days, 
with the 63 days and the 63 days. And we know that in Samuel Snow's letters, this mirrors Samuel Snow's letters. Um, one of the things here, when this 126 days was first given, I looked at June 15th when I saw the 391.5 um, going uh, from October 13th here. So we got this, the 391.5, because I saw this as the kings of, of divided Judah. Judah's divided from northern Israel, and this is the period of the kings of Judah. And, well, Saul, David, and Solomon are 120 years, so I counted back 120 days, and I got this date. So mine was six days different than his. And then when we analyze these, we found that these lined up with Samuel Snow's letters. So I have it in there in the notes. But in Samuel Snow's letters, you're going to have February 16th, his first letter. It's six days later. It's published on the 22nd. And then this is going to line up with his republishing of it on April 3rd. I'll just put April 3rd, which is the Passover for the Jews in 1844, but the false Passover. And then this is going to line up with April 19th. And then you're going to have uh, May 2nd is going to line up with August 11th, uh, Julian. It's better. So... Even in this line, we can look, this is the Gregorian date, but if we go August 11, Julian, that's going to be 13 days later than this date. And, and so that's going to line up with April 19th. This is going to line up with, um, I believe it's May 2nd. And then you're going to have... Uh, Finally, this one's going to line up with June 22nd. And June 22nd is going to be a Pentecost. So there's a lot of information in here. We've done this study before. But the point is, this is Samuel Snow's letters. And then, if you count 391.5 days from June 22nd, it comes to July 18th, of course, in 1845. But it still comes to that symbol. These were the things that convinced Jeff that what I was doing was correct because it was witnessed to by things that we already understood to be true. So this Levitical chiasm is part of this message and that's what is witnessing against Deborah and Barak. So when Jeff wakes up here on September 7th, 2019, and he sees the rebellion of Baal Peor, right? So that's another story, but that's one of the stories we attach here to this. And I'm, I'm here at noon seeing Jeff presenting. I'm at Warburg Church, but I'm watching on my iPhone. And I notice this structure, this first part of this structure, just going from here to here, that this is going to be 63 days over here, nine times seven is 63. And this is going to be the sixth day of the sixth month on the biblical calendar, I believe. Um, so, so we end up with this truth that's brought out in the story of Deborah and Barak. <clears throat> now there's a lot more to this story because there's the song of Deborah and Barak. And there are so many things that this story was teaching us that it was almost impossible uh, to understand that this was even, that this was God's hand, that so many things could come out in this story. Okay, so we're going to go through a little bit more of this. I'm moving along a little faster than I thought. I'm covering some ground here. Now, so you can see in your notes, it's on page 84 of this uh, uh, present uh, notes that we have. It'll change once we put some more notes in. But in the story of Deborah and Brack, in the notes for that, which is number four presentation, it's going to be the second page of those notes. 
So it shows Samuel Snow's letters. And then we're looking at some of the symbols. So in the story of Deborah and Barak, we were able to see the connections between Deborah and the school of the prophets. Deborah means a bee, which relates to North Bumblebee Road, where the school was located. And there are many symbols which we cannot now relate. However, we can point out the river Kaishan, uh, the 10,000 men called from Zebulun and Naphtali and Kadesh can represent 10,000 days from November 9th, 1989 to March 27th, 2017. Uh, the battle symbolizes the events of September 7th, 2019. Right, So that's the battle between Parminder, Sisera, and the message of Deborah and Barak, which we say is a message relating to uh, ultimately a message about July 18th. And, and we see this in the Song of Deborah and Barak. Now, in the Song of Deborah and Barak, uh, it's going to expand on what we see here. That is, the Song of Deborah and Barak is a zoom into this January 11th, 2020 date. But it's going to witness to another date. So I have to erase all this, but you have it in your notes. And so we need to look at the song of Deborah and Barak. Now, what are these songs in Scripture? A song of an experience, right? And this is something that we have experienced. This is a trial that we went through. Now, in this line, and I'm not going to remember all the details. I need my notes here. Um, but like all lines, we have a period of darkness. Right? We're going to have this darkness here. And we're connecting this to the darkness of Parminder, right? But it's going to start when Jeff wakes up, September 7th, 2019. Or pardon me, this, this is actually, this darkness here is September 7th. And then on November 9th, 2019, a message arrives to this movement. Now, uh, this message, it, and we look at the verses, so I know we don't have time to go through all these verses. It takes a lot of time. But in the Song of Deborah and Barak, it's in chapter 5, um, the son, and then sang Deborah and Barak the song, the son of Abinoam on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the God of Israel. Lord, when thou went out, wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. The clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. So this is a song of their experience, but it's also rehearsing history. The mountains melted from before the, before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased, and they ceased in Israel until I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates." Was there a shield or a spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? So here we have this war. And we're saying that that war is November 9th, 2019. But then it talks about the gates. So 63 days later, we're going to have September 7th. And we can see, um, I'm doing this, wait, I'm doing this wrong. January 11th, I'm going backwards. January 11th, 2020. 
And this message here, January 11th, 2020, is Jeff's recognition of something regarding Daniel chapter 11. And, and he notes this, that we have an understanding of Daniel 11. And then later he sees it's part of a structure. And he's going to present that on uh, March 31st, 2020, he's going to present a message regarding that Levitical chiasm. But here when it says in verse 8b, so there was war in the gates, that's here. And then it says, was there a sword or a spear um, seen among 40,000 in Israel? We're saying that this is connecting us to this Levitical chiasm. <clears throat> Now, when Jeff finds this Levitical chiasm, it brings me back to something that I presented on November 9th, 2019. So November 9th, 2019, it's not written here in the chart per se, but I present the Mayan date, the Mayan calendar, in relation to July 18th. And, and when I do that, I set in motion something that it connects with, with Jeff recognizing this Levitical chiasm. And then he's, on March 31st, he's going to present it. And then on April 26th, about four weeks later, I write a response and I show him the 777 chiasm that shows that July 18th is on a line of failed predictions. And I write him and say, maybe our prediction will fail and I ask him to watch the video of a presentation I did. And he says he will watch the presentation, read my notes, and he will respond, which he never did. Never responded to that. So whether something happened, that why he didn't respond, I do not know. But I do know on April 26th, 2020, there's the email to Jeff and it's going to say there's going to be a f the prediction will be failed so it's an e email about failed predictions now, I'm not saying unequivocally that our prediction is going to fail but it's on a line of failed predictions and we should consider that what does it mean and that's um, 5 verse 9 my heart toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people uh, bless the Lord. So my heart is toward the governors of Israel, the leaders of Israel. And I'm giving this message to Jeff regarding July 18th. And I feel responsible for July 18th. When I, when I first came up with July 18th, it was just, it just came, right? But I saw the consequences. What if it's going to be a failed prediction? And I thought maybe, maybe that's just doubt on my part. But I wanted Jeff to examine it. I wasn't going to tell everybody July 18th was going to fail. I did on July 17th present that study again because I knew if it failed that there would be a reason why, and it did fail. So we have a disappointment. In 5.10 it says, Speak ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. Right. So we're relating this to those that are riding on white asses. This is the prophecy of Islam. Uh, that sit in judgment and walk by the way. So we give this message of July 18th. It says in verse 11, They are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel, then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. And so the rehearsal of these righteous acts is going to be March 7th. So we're going to have July 18th. This is going to be the second angel arriving. Right? And then we're going to have on March 7th, 2021, 1,700 years to the same date in which the first Sunday law occurs with Constantine, we're going to have uh, this formalized. So this is the second angel arriving, and this is going to be the second angel formalized. We're going to rehearse. We're going to examine the foundation. We're going to rehearse 
the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. That's verse 11. And then verse 12. Um, now, 512 is 2 to the power of 9. I don't know if people understand what that means, but if I go 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and you do that to the ninth power, you'll get 512. And to the, two to the ninth power symbolizes the 20th day of the ninth month, and that's the end of the 777 uh, days that start on November 9th. And it also represents the truth that was found by uh, Stephen on that date, that there are 777 years from 457 B.C. to the first Sunday law that we talked about, which is the previous way, Mark, being, which is the formalization of the second angel's message. So it's fitting that on the empowerment of that second angel's message, we're going to see that connection with the Sunday law. Does that make sense? So we have all of these symbols here. So this line to me is, is very, very solid. <clears throat> you got the second angel powered here on December 25th, 2021. Right, and this is going to be the first angel arrives. The first angel is formalized and the first angel is empowered. So there we have our first six waymarks. And then we have our seventh waymark. And we're looking at December 25th, 2021, to January 11th, 2023. And here we have a symbol that's interesting in that this is, um, uh, it's 183 days. So if I go here, uh, January 11th, uh, 2023. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and this is the third angel arriving. And this is going to be 383 days. That's called an, a deficient embolism which is just in calendar talk. It's a leap year in the Jewish calendar, um, but it, a leap year can be 383, 384, or 385. So a deficient leap year is 383, a regular leap year is 384, and a complete leap year is 385. So this one has 383 days. So on the biblical calendar, that's one year. Um, and it's 365 plus 18. So that's another way of thinking of it. Now that's going to be uh, verse 13. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So this date, January 11th, 2023, has to do with Colin's prediction, which we're going to look at. And uh, there was a number of things that we can see here. And I'm not sure if I did that right, but um, from November 9th, 2019 is 1,190 days, and that goes to February 11th, 2023. Um, so February 11th, 2023, I'm just going to read this here. So there's a number of things. Uh, in, so I'm going to read this over. So I just went through it, and I'm going to go through this again. In Judges 5.10... For instance, we have speak, that's in Hebrew, that's 7878, meditate. Ye that ride, that's the Hebrew number 7392 on white asses, that sit, that's H3427, in judgment, and walk, 1980 in the Hebrew number, by the way, uh, that's 1870. So you can see some of these symbols. Here we have an array of Hebrew numbers. The verse we place on July 18, 2020, the call is to meditate, which is a doubling of 78. In 78 days, there are 1,802 hours. So we have a symbol of July 18th. 
The sum of the divisors of 78 are 168. That's the number of hours in a week. The word ride, 7392, is 68 times 44, or 264 times 28. 1870 for the way is also a symbol of July 18. Also, 18 times 70 is 1260. From that date in July 18th, 2020, a period of 14,587 days, or 14,400 days plus is 187 days. Uh, so that is from August 11th. So in August 11th, 1980, we talked about in connection with Glacier View. Glacier View starts on August 10th and goes to August 15th, 1980. But on August 11th, I'm converted on that date. That's the date I mark as my conversion. I watched the falling of the stars, yeah, the most spectacular Perseid meteor shower in history. Uh, there was never a moment there was not a star falling. Um, I couldn't read a newspaper from those stars, but it wasn't like the falling of the stars in Millerite history. But for me, it was just as impressive. And that's why I remember the day I was converted. I remembered, I didn't remember the date at the time. I had to look it up. When did that Perseid meteor shower happen? I knew it was on a Monday. And so I always thought it was the 18th, but it was actually the 11th because there was no Perseid meteor shower on the 18th. It was on the 11th. And it happens to be the number of days that the manna fell. And that's 14,400 days plus 187 days. In Judges 5.11, we had rehearsed the righteous acts. So that goes back uh, to March 7th, 2021, when we first began the, the study, the first of the studies of 187 studies that we did on examining the foundation. And in Judges 5.12, aligns with the end of the 777 days, 111 weeks. Here we see many symbols. So that's going to be the next way mark is 111. The call for Deborah to awake is repeated twice. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake. Utter a song. Right? And Deborah, her name, 1683 is 168 times 3 equals 504 divided by 2, which equals 252. Arise Barak, his number is 1301, relates to the 1,301,000 days from the first day of the first month in 1533 to the first day of the first month in 2030. So this number of Barak, H3101, this is the number of, did I get that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's going to be, um, I know I was, I, I get a little bit dyslexic with numbers sometimes. Yeah, so it's gonna be 1301, I knew, I knew I was doing something wrong. So 1301, it's going to relate to this number, right? So there's his number. And that if we go from the first time God gives them the first day of the first month, it's going to be in 1533 BC, right? And if we count the number of days to April 5th, 2030, it's going to be this number of days, so a thousand times the number of Barak. And that's the first day of the first month in 2030. That's pretty amazing that we could be this precise in the story of Barak. Um, but it relates to that because there's a bunch of other symbols that relate. And so each of these symbols are building upon each other to give us a picture, a complete picture of this story, of the song of Deborah and Barak, talking about our history and the things that we are grappling with in this chronology. Now, this is also a period of 187 metonic cycles. So if you count this, a metonic cycle is 19 years, which is 200, 235 lunar months, and this period is 187 metonic cycles plus 111 days. That's pretty amazing, right? It's amazing that we have something, this number 187 just keeps jumping out at us as we look at these lines. Um, so we know the difference between 777 prophetic months and 777 lunar months are 365 days. So we know a lunar month 
is 29.530587 days long. So it's a little over 29 and a half days. So that's a lunar month. A prophetic month is 30 days, right? But over 777 months, the difference, what did we say the difference was? 365. 365 days. There should be no relationship to, to this to produce a year. So that's the difference. So 777 prophetic months and 777 lunar months are the difference in the length of that period is exactly 365 days, which is a year. And so we see all of these symbols of time. So there's, uh, there's another interesting thing when we look at this chart, which I have on page 85 of these notes. Um, it talks about this period of days of 1,600 and uh, uh, 1,160 days, which represent 1,190, which is November 9th. Uh, this show, symbol shows up in lots of different ways. So one is the 391 years is 12 periods of 11,900 days plus 1,190 minutes. And I'm not going to go into that because that's a very detailed study. But it all connects together this January 11th, 2023 date that Collins prophetic mirror connects with the prediction of Trump's re-election. Now, Colin never set that date, but that mirror suggests that date. And so there's all of these different lengths of years are all here in these symbols. So the latter part of Judges um, chapter 5 is going to have its own line. So there's another line there as well. And it's going to give all kinds of information regarding this message. And we also have in the last page of Deborah Brack an analysis of these names of all the tribes that they call and their response. And and it's going to examine the Hebrew number for their name and the sum and the reverse sum and the product and the combined sum and uh, all of these things. And all of these numbers jump out at us and tell us uh, something about this story, that this is a story that is prophetically significant in relationship to the chronology that this movement has used. It wouldn't make sense to anyone else Nobody else could take those numbers and see the significance, but we already have all of these symbols and these numbers witness to these symbols. I know that was a lot of information in this story of Deborah and Barak. It's a lot of information. There's a lot of information in these messages. But what is that story telling us, the story of Deborah Barak and the song of Deborah and Barak? It's not just telling us something about Parminder and his errors. It's telling us something about a message that's going to conquer error. And we need to listen to that message and heed that message. So I invite everyone who has been studying these things to take the time to go through these studies again after this camp meeting and to examine the things that we have studied. Study with others. Test them. Question. Find the errors that I've made because there may be some errors that need to be corrected and when we correct those, we may see something even clearer. We spend a lot of time on the book of Judges a lot of time on Samson, especially. We're not even there yet. And Samson, there's so many different things uh, that we just, we're not even sure how to form the lines. There's so many lines. But we need to understand this message. It gives us light for our feet. It brings conviction and power to our lives. And God is going to give this movement a message to give 
to the church. That message is not going to be all of this. Some of it may be. But we need a message that's going to convert us first. That we can have the assurance that what God has been teaching us is true because we're going to face some very difficult situations that we can hardly imagine. So I invite you all to join me in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for this day. We know, Lord, that there's things you want to teach us, and we're not ready to hear them yet. But we ask, Lord, that we can be ready. We pray for this movement. There's not many here each day. But we know, Lord, that you have a purpose in bringing us here. And we just ask that even those who are online, who are experiencing uh, their fellowship with others where possible, that you can bring them the conviction that you are leading us and that they can trust in you. We know, Lord, there's others who are discouraged by what has happened in the movement. We pray, Lord, that you can lead us to share with them the things that you are doing. Be with us now, this evening, and bring us together again to study your word is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.